Hey everyone, happy 2020. Hope you all had a wonderful new year and we are back, back for more lessons. And today, this, uh, this is a great English lesson because this lesson is all about, as you can see from the picture right there, acronyms. I am going to talk to you about th over 30 different acronyms that are common in American English. Now, some of these acronyms are universal. They are well known across all English varieties. If you're talking about American English or British English, Australian, Canada, but other acronyms are specific to the United States. And as we go through the lesson, I will tell you which acronyms are really just used in the United States because they refer to they refer to things happening in the US. So first I want to tell you that there are a couple of different types of acronyms and that's where I think we should begin because there are two types of acronyms. One type is an acronym that you say just like it's a word. You say it as though it's one word. The other type of acronym are those in which you say each individual letter. And that's what these acronyms in this lessons, uh, that's what this lesson's all about. Acronism, acronyms where you say each individual letter and that is called initialism. So initialism is when the phrase is abbreviated using the first letter of each word. And then you're going to pronounce each letter individually. For example, look at these two acronyms right here, LOL and IDK. Now, some of these acronyms may be very familiar to you, others may not be. I think this one is LOL, it stands for laugh out loud. And IDK stands for I don't know. These are common acronyms that people use when you are sending a text message or chatting. So I've divided this lesson up into different categories. We're going to talk about acronyms based on different categories. And the first category that I have for you, because I use LOL and IDK, are acronyms that are all about text acronyms, these text abbreviations. So I've given you a list of acronyms right here. I will tell you what, e what each one means, but the reason why I'm giving you the list is that I want to see if you can identify some of these acronyms on your own. If you are looking at this list and thinking, okay, some of them sound familiar or some of them I know what they mean. Now, when we're talking about text acronyms, that you're on your phone, you're sending a, a text message, often, usually, acronyms are capitalized. If you see them in a newspaper, they're going to use capital letters. When we're talking about texting, some people you can use either capital letters or lowercase. Texting is very informal, it's very casual, and that's why some people may use lowercase letters. But for if you're thinking about you're writing a paper, something more formal in business or in school, and you want to use an acronym, you should use capital letters, okay? But that's why I put both of them up here because we're talking about text acronyms, all right? So some of them, some of you already see, you, you know some of these and that's great. So let's look at these right now. BRB, that just stands for be right back. If somebody texts you that, that means they'll be right back. IMHO, in my humble opinion. People often write this before they state their opinion about some topic. You may also see IMO, in which people say, in my opinion. N NVM is never mine. BTW, by the way. THX, thanks. And B in the letter, in the number four is just B4. So I, I don't know about you, I am not, I'm not a big person when it comes to writing text messages. So I really don't use these acronyms. There are many, many different text acronyms, and this has become, I, I think, so much more popular in the past decade as more and more people are using cell phones and sending text messages, and they want to write faster, and they want to say things as quickly as they can. People tend to use these acronyms a bit more. Now, I will say also when you're writing, this is specific to text messaging. 
If you are in school, I do not avoid using these acronyms in any kind of formal writing. If you are writing a serious email or if you are in business, these are just for texting, sending text messages. All right. So these are some common text acronyms. Now I have a question for you and I want to see if you can identify some of the different acronyms because again, this is interactive. I want you guys to write your answers in the chat or in the comments and, and practice, practice your English skills. So here's an example of a, a sample text message. I want you to try, try to read it out loud to yourself, read it to yourself and say the acronym, the full form. Don't just say the letters. See if you can interpret this text and say the full form, all right? So I want you to read this to yourself right now and see if you can just not only identify those acronyms, but actually you know what they mean. So here are more acronyms. There are a total, I've highlighted them for you. There are a total of four acronyms in this text message, all right? So if you don't know what these acronyms mean, some of them I think are a little easier than others, um, <laughs> but these are the meanings. So the number two plus night just stands for tonight, like you're practicing, you're saying it. STBY, sucks to be you. This is something that people might say kind of jokingly when you want to sympathize with somebody and you're jokingly, you're, you're saying it among friends, you know, oh, that sucks to be you. JK, I think is one of the more common text acronyms, just kidding. And TTYL means talk to you later. So before I asked you to read this text message in the full form, you would say, I heard you have to work tonight. Sucks to be you. Just kidding. Don't worry. Won't watch the movie without you. Talk to you later. That is how you would say this message in its full form. Again, I think some people, especially I think younger people nowadays, they use acronyms all the time. They use them quite often. Um, for me, I don't really use them that much, especially when uh, I'm texting. So the first set that I wanted to talk to you about were text acronyms. Now I want to look at some information acronyms. These are acronyms that We'll, we'll give you some more specific information about something. And I think these are pretty common right here. So looking at these acronyms, again, see if you can identify these acronyms, all right? What do they mean? If you know what they mean, go ahead, write it in the chat, share with us. I will tell you what these acronyms mean, but this is to give a little more specific information. So. The meaning of these four acronyms. All right, FAQ. This is an acronym that I think you will often see if you're, you know, online and you're searching for information on the internet. And you may see on a website it says FAQ, frequently asked questions. If you have a question about something, this is where this is where you want to go. You want to go to this section and see what questions people have. Frequently asked questions. SUV sport utility vehicle. We're talking about a car. Now, SUVs, you can see these vehicles all over the world, but again, I think this is somewhat specific uh, to America. In the United States, there are so many SUVs. If you are in the US and you're driving on the, on the interstate, you will see SUVs everywhere. SUV, SUV, SUV. I was just back in the United States I was surprised at how many SUVs I saw. But when you're talking about a vehicle, this is a common acronym. They would refer to it as an SUV, a sport utility vehicle. DOA, this is more, it's probably not as common, but it's more of a medical term. It stands for dead on arrival. And this is a, an acronym that you may hear if you're watching maybe a TV show, like a medical drama, and you might hear DOA. Speaking of medicine, MD, this is another very common acronym that you might find at the end of a person's name, and it just means that they are a medical doctor, all right? MD, medical doctor. This would be found in the title of somebody's name, okay? So again, let's, let's practice a little bit, all right? I wanna practice, and I want you to tell me 
what does this acronym stand for? So I've given you the sentence. For any online business, SEO is so important for success. What does this acronym stand for? I think you can identify it because the acronym is capitalized, but what do you think it means? And I think oftentimes with acronyms, some of them are so common. Like I think SEO is very popular. You may hear people talking about it. You may see it if you're reading a newspaper article. I think sometimes people know what it means, but they don't know the meaning of the individual letters. So try to tell me, what do you think that those individual letters mean? The S, the E, and the O. <laughs> do you guys have any idea what that stands for? So if we're talking about an online business, we're talking about SEO, which is search engine optimization. For any online business, search engine optimization is so important for success that you want to have SEO on your web for your website so that if somebody's searching for information, your website will get ranked near the top. So that is SEO, search engine optimization, okay? And this is one I think is more common. You're going to hear this people just using the acronym SEO, especially if you work online or you work in an online business, people often talk about SEO. Now, the next one I have, I wanna do a, a question, okay? So I'm just going to tell you the question. I want you to listen to the acronym and tell me what you think it means, okay? So the question that I have for you is if somebody asks you, hey, what's your DOB, all right? I need, you to, I need you to tell me your DOB. What is that? What's your DOB? So again, this is just listening for the acronym and then trying to understand, well, what is this person asking me? What, are, what information are they trying to get? What's your DOB? Of course, if somebody is asking for your DOB, they are asking for your date of birth. What's your DOB? Now, this one, I think maybe it was a little tricky because I, I think often you would see this in writing. Not many people might ask you in speaking DOB, but if you are filling out an application, if you're filling out a document, you may see this DOB and it's asking for your date of birth, DOB, date of birth. Okay, so we've gone through some, some acronyms already. We've gone through some texting acronyms. We've gone through some information acronyms and we're doing this by category. So if you're joining us, if you're joining me today, we're, we're building vocabulary and teaching many different common acronyms in the United States. But first, because it is the new year, I wanna give a special thank you, a special shout out to all of our patrons out there who are helping support Interactive English and, and really make this possible. I wanna give all of our current patrons a shout out and just a, a warm thank you to Vicky, Gustav, Aiden, An, Chung, Danny, Jerry, Joanne, Pavel, Pipi, Prof, Juhander, Richard, Sergej, Sim Lee, um, <laughs> Jandron, Will, Peggy. Thank you guys so much for supporting what we do. If you guys are interested in becoming a patron, there is a link in the description down below. You can check that out. We have some cool rewards. Now, let's continue with the, the next part, all right? The next category that I have for you is business acronyms, okay? So here are some, uh, I think, common business acronyms that you may, you may find if you're reading an email, a business email um, to a colleague. If you're sending information to a colleague or just in business in general, you're gonna find these acronyms, all right? So what do you think they mean? Just looking at them, hopefully you can see some of them and you identify them immediately right away. So let's, let me tell you, I'll tell you what these acronyms mean and then I have some more uh, questions for you. All right, yes, Aiden, how are you? Excellent, good to see you. <laughs> and so the first one, CTA, stands for Call to Action. This is a, a common business acronym. This is an acronym that I see a lot when talking about YouTube. And they talk about videos and like, oh, you need to do a call to action. You need to tell somebody to do something. For example, often in our video lessons, I would tell you guys like, oh, go ahead, 
hit the like button. That is a call to action. Me asking you to do something, whether it's hit the like button or write us a comment uh, down below, those are all call to actions that I'm asking you to do something. So that would be an example, CTA call to action. MBA, this is a, another one if you're talking about somebody's education and say this person has an MBA, it stands for a Master's of Business Administration, an MBA. EST, this is specific to the United States because it's talking about a time zone. So you may see this when somebody's referring to a time, like the meeting is going to begin at 3 p.m. EST, Eastern Standard Time. And this is a common time zone because it includes New York City. So New York City is EST, it is Eastern Standard Time. So the US has many different time zones. You have EST, Eastern Standard Time, CST, Central Standard Time, uh, Mountain Time, as well as PST, Pacific Standard Time. So those are all acronyms that are related to time. And there are many, many common, there are many acronyms that are related to time all across the world. So the last one, which is again, a great business one. I think many of us like, like the, they, we enjoy this acronym right here because maybe we make a little more money. OT is talking about overtime, all right? I'm trying to collect some OT or I'm gonna work some OT this next week. I'm going to work overtime. All right, are you ready for some questions? Um, business acronyms. I want you to write your answer in the chat, all right? What do you know? Um, Somebody asked, Melissa, is EST only for New York? EST is for any, any place within that time zone. So all those states, uh, New York, Florida, uh, Georgia, there are many places that would be in Eastern Standard Time. So what do you think about this question? I'm supposed to submit my application to HR, all right? You see the acronym HR. What does HR stand for? This is a very common business acronym when people, if you work for a big company and they're talking about HR, all right? What do you think? HR, HR stands for, yes, Lolly, excellent. If you're talking about HR, you're talking about human resources. Often in a big company, there is a department which is human resources, which deals with people um, hiring people, or if you have something, you know, you have a problem with a boss or another employee, you might go talk to people in human resources, or they just shorten it and they just call it HR, HR. Um, and the next one, again, this is a listening one. So I'm just going to tell you a question. I want you to tell me what does the acronym, acronym mean? So if I say, you know, we can't start the meeting without you. What's your ETA? All right, we can't start the meeting without you. What's your ETA? And I think this is a common question. I use this question quite often if I'm talking to somebody else and I say, hey, you know, you know can you tell me what's your ETA? Or if I'm writing an email to somebody and I want to, to know this information, I might ask, you know, hey, what's your ETA? What do you think it stands for? ETA, I hope. I hope that e you wrote uh, or that you know that ETA stands for estimated time of arrival. So if somebody's asking, you know, for your ETA, they're asking what time will you arrive? What time will you get there? We can't start the meeting without you. What's your ETA? And again, this is one th something that, you know, I might ask to a friend if we're meeting out and they're running late. I'd say, hey, you know, what's your ETA? When are you going to get here? The next one, the next set of acronyms are government acronyms. And again, some of these are definitely more specific to the United States because we're talking about the U.S. government. So looking at these acronyms, I'm sure some of them may be a little familiar to you. Others may not be. What do you think they mean? All right. Um, do you have any idea what these acronyms right here mean? So I hope the first one is CIA. This stands for the Central Intelligence Agency. If you watch TV, especially some drama shows, action, 
this is an acronym that you may hear quite often. Somebody works for the CIA. They work for the Central Intelligence Agency. The next one, DNC stands for Democratic National Committee. This is an acronym that I think you will hear more of this next year or this year because in the United States, it is an election year. We're going to uh, have a vote for the president. And right now, they're going through the Democratic primary. So this is an acronym that you may hear if, or you may see if you're reading a newspaper or if you're watching a TV broadcast, they might talk about a news broadcast. They might say the DNC, the Democratic National Committee. MIA is more of a military acronym. It stands for missing in action. If somebody is MIA, they are missing in action. It basically means when, when soldiers would go off to war, if they could not find the soldier, if they don't know what happened to them, this person, if this person is alive or dead, they would say that the person is MIA. They are missing in action. Nowadays, I think you could use this casually in um, just talking about everyday life. If somebody is missing, if they are not there, you could just say, hey, this person, they're MIA. I don't know where they are. They're gone. They're missing. They're MIA. POW, this is definitely specific to military and war, prisoner of war. If somebody is a POW, it means they are a prisoner of war. All right, so here's a couple more questions to test your knowledge of these government acronyms. What does it mean if somebody says, well, hey, we work for the FBI. Again, this is a common acronym that if you watch a any kind of action show that has to do with the US government, then this is an acronym that you may hear. FBI, what does that mean? We work for the FBI. I think, I think this is another acronym, maybe you, you've probably heard it, but perhaps you don't know what the individual letters stand for. So I hope if you're talking about the FBI that you guys said, we work for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI stands for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI, another common one. All right, so here is another listening one for you. So again, talking about the <laughs> TV dramas, I might say, I could say this. I could say, ooh, CSI uncovered some new evidence to solve the mystery. CSI uncovered some new evidence to solve the mystery. What do you think that acronym stands for? And <laughs> it is actually, it was the, it's the name of a TV show. So some of you may have even seen this TV show. CSI uncovered some new evidence to solve the mystery. There are many different shows for CSI. I think you had CSI Las Vegas, CSI New York, CSI Miami. And if you're saying, if you're talking about CSI, it just stands for Crime Scene Investigators. Crime Scene investiga Investigators uncovered some new evidence to solve the mystery. So CSI, Crime Scene Investigators, like I said, there is there are many different c TV shows that are CSI. It is about these crime scene investigators going around and, and trying to solve these mysteries, these murders. Uh, the next one, the next set of acronyms. Um, I don't know any of these, that's okay. Uh, again, the, the whole idea is just to practice more of these acronyms, try to get more exposure to learn them because these are, these are acronyms that you may read about in a newspaper. You may hear people talking about them in conversation or when watching the news. So this is, this is useful information. And I know, I know that I'm giving you a lot of acronyms right now, but the idea is I, I thought some of them you may be familiar with. Now, these are identifying acronyms right here. Again, some of them are very specific to the United States, which is why I said that this lesson is about common acronyms in the United States. Some, of them, some may be more easy than others. So these are all identifying acronyms, if you don't know what they mean. CDC stands for Center for Disease Control. Again, this is an organization in the United States that would talk about places that are, oh, it's, it's not safe to travel there because there's an outbreak of this disease. 
or they talk about certain illnesses, even diseases that are happening, things that are happening in the United States. And you might hear when they're t anything health related, you might hear ta people talk about CDC, the Center for Disease Control. NBA, okay, National Basketball Association. Any sport that you're talking, especially those in the United Spa States, all of them use acronyms. NBA, National Basketball Association. NFL, National Football Association. PGA, Professional Golf Association. There are so many professional sports and they use these acronyms. MLA, this is for, I'd say students. If you are in school and you're writing an essay, and you have, to, you have to cite your sources. And they say, oh, what style should I use? APA or MLA? That is where this comes from. MLA, this is more for really academic. If somebody's getting their master's or PhD, they may come across this acronym. It stands for Modern Language Association. Modern Language Association, MLA. And the last one, NAACP. National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. This was an organization, again, specific to the United States. It was created in the early 1900s. It's a civil rights organization, and that is exactly what they, they do, exactly what they say they do. It is the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. So again, this is an acronym that you may read about in a newspaper, or you may hear if you're listening to some news broadcast and they talk about the NAACP. All right, are you ready for another couple of acronyms? If I, I give you this one, uh, this sentence and say, well, he has an AA meeting later this week. What does it mean, AA? If we're talking about AA, what do you think? He has an AA meeting this week. This picture, it's not a very great picture, um, to represent this meeting. But again, this is an acronym that, you, again, you may hear if you're watching a TV show or a movie, AA. He has an AA meeting this week. So if you hear this acronym, AA, it's talking about Alcoholics Anonymous. Yes, somebody has it. Just some in here. Excellent. He has an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting this week. AA is talking about it's uh, it's an organization for people that w maybe they have a problem drinking and they're trying to get help. And they would go to these meetings, an AA meeting, to get help with their drinking problem so that they can ultimately so that they can quit drinking alcohol altogether. So AA stands for Alcoholics Anonymous. The next one, all right? <laughs> the next one is... Again, it's a listening one. So what if I told you that, okay, when I grow up, I want to be a WWE superstar. What does that mean? When I grow up, I want to be a WWE superstar. That is another acronym. Um, I guess you could say it's related to sport, WWE. Maybe you're familiar with it, maybe you're not, but I'd say when I grow up, I want to be a WWE superstar. And that would just mean you want to be a world wrestling entertainment superstar. So this is something that's very popular, uh, especially in the United States. WWE stands for World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. All right. So again, that was, I think in total, those were 37 different acronyms that I taught you today. I hope that you are possibly familiar with some of them already. If you're not, um, then that's great because I hope you learn some new acronyms that the goal is not just really that you're going to go out and just use these in general conversation. I think even more important than that is that you are able to comprehend these acronyms if you are reading about them in a newspaper article or you're just listening and you hear these acronyms in listening, if you are listening to the news or a podcast, these are common acronyms that, that you are going to hear and use. So please, if you learn something new, here, here is my call to action, my CTA. If you learn some new acronyms, please hit that like button down below. I know many of you before had been requesting a lesson on acronyms because 
Well, I think they can be a little confusing, and also they are very common. You see these acronyms all the time, so it, it's good to go through them and you know un, uh, try to understand a little bit more about what they mean. And when you understand the entire acronym and you actually see the words, I think that will help you understand the meaning a bit better. So please, again, hit that like button, share this lesson. If you know others who are trying to practice and improve your English, you can always write to us below down in the comments because we love hearing from you. And you can check us out on social media. We are active on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and anything else. Nope, just right here on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for joining me today. Again, hope you had a, a I, I hope you have a wonderful 2020. There is so much going on this year and there is much, much more to come and I'll let you know. So thank you, uh, Dennis. Thanks, Antonio, uh, Olivia, Melissa, Aiden, Eloisa. Thank you guys for joining me today. I appreciate it. Um, Putri, Lali, Donna, Donny Jorbeck, Donny Jorbeck, Wu, sorry if I mispronounced names, uh, Yana, Busakorn, thank you, Maple Strip, uh, Myra, thank you guys. Hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time. So long.